So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to recap the compound interest formula. So its future value is equal to present value, 1 plus im to the power of n, where future value is fb, pv is the present value or the principal, i is the interest rate, it's the effective interest rate, and it is in decimal fraction notation, in other words, zero point something kind of a situation, or you take the percentage, if it's 10%, you just say 10 divided by 100. M is the compounding periods. And N is the duration. And when you're doing this, your units for your N and M need to coincide. So if M is equal to 12, so it's monthly, then your N needs to be in months. Okay, so we have the compound interest formula, if V is equal to PV one plus I M to the power of N. And what we're gonna do now is we are going to make N the subject of the formula. So we want N equals. So to do that, what we're going to do is we first going to take away everything that's relatively easy for us to take away. And that is this entire term involves n, this one doesn't, so, but it's multiplied with it. So we can divide through by PV. So if we divide through by PV, we are going to get future value divided by present value is equal to 1 plus im to the power of n. Okay, now this is where it's going to get a little bit more challenging because that n sits as an exponent. So we can't just divide through by 1 plus im, we can't just take 1 across because 1 is to the power of n there because it's inside the brackets, so the whole term there is to the power of n. So we have to introduce some more exponent rules or power-based rules. So the rule is essentially if you have a to the power of c and it's equal to b, so you have three unknowns, your c is actually equal to the log base a of b. Okay, so it's using that. Now, log a of b can also be written in terms of a different base. And in terms of a different base, it'll be, say, log base e. The b will be over there. And log e, the a will be over there. So what we're talking about with these rules is, firstly, if you have a to the exponent of c equal to b, your c is equal to log a b. So we can solve for that um, exponent or power using this formula. But the fact that that log the base a is there makes things a bit challenging, it makes things a bit awkward. So we can rewrite this in terms of a base that we're comfortable with. So instead of like log base seven, we can rewrite it in terms of log base 10 or log base E. E is just the natural log. There's actually a button on your calculator that does it called LIN. It's just the LN button on your calculator. The LN button on your calculator stands for log base E. And we're going to use that kind of idea because now we're going to make things even a little bit more complicated. There is one other aspect of the log rules that we utilize in this, and that is essentially saying that if you have log base e of something to the power of something, it can be rewritten as the, the power of log e to the m. This one is the one that we're basically going to use. So we want to get the n to 
come down, we are going to take the natural log on both sides. So the natural log is just log base E. I'm going to write it out the long way now just so that you can get familiar with it. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides so nothing changes to both sides. I m to the power of n. And then we can, from the rule that we've just explained where there's the power kind of situation, we can take the n log e 1 plus i m. So we still have the log e f v over p v sitting over there. And now we're like, okay, that's cool because we can take this whole term across by dividing through by it. So now we're going to have log e f v over p v divided by log e 1 plus i m is equal to n. And again, we can just rewrite it so that we're comfortable with the n on the left hand side. And then I'm going to write it as lin now because it takes a lot less writing. So this is fv over pv and lin is 1 plus im. And a reminder that lin is just the short notation for log base e. And there is a button on your computer for lin straight away. So you can use that when you are calculating your n. So that is your formula for n. So, okay, so we're looking at an example, and this example says, after how many years will investment grow from 19,000 to 27,864 and, and 53 cents if the interest was advertised at 11% per annum, compounded semi-annually? So the first thing we note is that it is talking about compounding interest. So Fv is equal to Pv, 1 plus Im to the power of n should be coming up in our heads. Now it says after how many years. So it's actually asking for n to be the subject of the formula. So you can either go ahead and do the derivation again to get n the subject of the formula, or you can just write it down. So that's lin Fv over Pv lin 1 plus i m. Okay, so that's the formula we're going to be using. Next up, we're going to just write down everything that we know so we can just make sure that we have everything. And again, I will do this the long way around. You can obviously skip steps if you reach the point where you're comfortable with the content. So an investment grows from 19,000. So we have PV is equal to 19,000 to 27,864 rand and 53 cents. So we have future value, 27,864 and 53 cents. And the interest was advertised at 11% per annum compounded semi-annually. So that's the nominal interest rate. You can see it because it says per annum and has compounding in brackets. So we have J here as 11% per annum compounded semi-annually. Now we need to convert this nominal interest to effective interest for use in our formula. So our effective interest is going to be I2. Why the 2? Because it's compounded semi-annually. So we're going to have 0 0.11 divided by 2 so that we can get the compounding in or we can get the interest, you know, per period. Right. Now we've written down everything that we know, let's see if we have everything for our formula. So we have FV, we have PV, we have I, we have M. So we sort it, so we can now just plug and play into the formula. So we're gonna have N is equal to the lin of 27,864 and 53 cents divided by 19,000 or divided by the lin of 1 plus 0 0.11 divided by 2. And that's going to give us 7.15 half years. 
Why is it half years? Because once again, the N and the M need to coincide. So this unit has to match with that unit by the M. And then we're pretty much done. Of one 